In studio right now, handling the coverage for WIMBX's 2017 Boilermaker is the one and only Roger Robinson. Roger, good morning. Thanks for well, coming in. Good morning. And I only found out last night after I talked to you at the party, you're a very modest man. You, you, you didn't tell me that you have won this year's Les Divin Award. I did do that. For outstanding journalism so. and contribution to the Boilermaker in particular and to the community in general. So he, really congratulations Thank on you so that. much. That's I, terrific. I, I appreciate that. I was a previous that. winner. His award um, they've omitted... Uh, contributions to the community They've taken <laughs> that part out of it. well he knows all about the road system i was just hearing well we, uh, we do talk all about that um, <laughs> and you're a former uh, a former uh, recipient of that award i um, won it about about six years ago i think yeah. for, partly for my work on on this broadcast mm-hmm. each year and then also for some writing that i'd done in national media yeah. and international media about the significance of the Boilermaker as something that contributes to the whole community, not just a sporting yeah, event, not, yeah. a, not just an elite sporting event, but something which is a community event. Uh, and the significance of running and the whole running movement and the way that it's something which has stepped outside yeah, sport yeah. and become something. So it was that kind of work. And, 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 and so, I, some of that writing is actually going into a book, which I've, I've, which should be out by this time next very year. Very nice. So we'll talk about that then. That's <laughs> great. And, and tell me, uh, what have, what do you see? I mean, we, we of course always say, well, we're special. We don't know why, but this area seems to pay more attention. And, you know, just, you don't have to say anything just to make us feel good, but I do want to know, um, there's so much that goes on in New York City. And you know the New York City Marathon, which is an enormous event. Um, Boston Marathon. But there's so much that goes on in Boston. An enormous event. Where a city like Utica is smaller, when you have an enormous event, does it have more of an impact on, on the oh, city? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and my experience, you know, I'm lucky in that I spend time in, in and around yeah. cities like New York and mm-hmm. Boston. I live partly in America work within the whole running business. But I also uh, have time in New Zealand, which has been my home for 40 years. And you can see that exactly there. Part of this writing that I'm doing about the Boilermaker is also, it will interest you, combined with writing about the Commonwealth Games when they were in Christchurch, New Zealand in 1974. When Mm -hmm. I was there, I was the stadium announcer for that. And that was for that Christchurch community, 250,000 people. It was huge. You know, it would be no exaggeration to say that most of the community were involved in some way as volunteers and, and, you know, working in some way. And, and of course, crowds of 34,000 out of a population of that. And so you're right. And a place like this... It becomes much more important because there's not so much going, not so much distraction, right? Right, and it's it's more all the more valuable. Yeah, you know, New York doesn't have a community mm-hmm. in this in this sense. Yeah, and I I have to tell you, I I saw when I, when I worked, I've worked elsewhere, and the, the things that we've done here, uh, whether it's a fundraiser or uh, toy drives, uh, you do them elsewhere, and they don't have the same impact as as when we do it here. And I guess it's just because it's a smaller, tight knit community and. And uh, more people, it's like every, you know, the percentage of people involved, I think is what you're talking about, is far greater in communities like this. Well, I, you know, I don't like doing stats, but if you, but if, if you look at the yeah. stats, you've got, you got Utica population, last estimate I saw 60,000. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tim Reed just said there's going to be 45,000 people yeah. at the finish line on yeah. Sunday. Think about well, that. that's pretty stunning. Mm-hmm. That's like, <laughs> yeah. just on those numbers, that's 75%. 40, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's of incredible. Of some are outside, but, but the, most of the runners are local. It's important that you're yeah. in international event that's part of the character right right and i totally commend that and the effort that the race that dick Matier and others make to bring in good overseas athletes yeah. that's great but uh f- five thousand of the runners are from your own county right and twelve thousand five hundred the last count i saw were from new york state so huge proportion of the runners are local and so yeah. it's making that that contribution to them yeah. and i'm bringing people up from new Paltz, new york uh, guys I'm coaching, yeah. uh, and, and they're running this race because it's a race I told them they've got to run. You know, this is, right, this right. is one of the races, and if, you, if you're into running, yeah. you've got to run the Boilermaker. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. And speaking of being into running, uh, talk a little bit about your, uh, speaking of being humble, uh, you have quite a career of your own um, that, uh, with many great accomplishments. Well, I don't want to talk about it at the minute because but my second knee is gone, so, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm not a happy camper at the minute. I was, this time last year, I was running really well. Yeah. At 77. At 77. Having, having, having had a, a knee replacement. replacement, and I was running times which were world class for that age yeah. group, and I was actually unbeaten over 75, and that was with one knee replacement on the right side. Good message for anybody yeah. who's having knee replacements. You know, you don't, you're not 
restricted. You can do things on it. Uh, And I'm writing articles about that as well. Mm -hmm. But then December, I started to get pain in the other knee. And when they looked at it, took a look at the MRI to see if there was any problem with the meniscus, they found there wasn't any. In other words, the, uh, not there wasn't any problem, but there wasn't any meniscus. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> it, That's a problem. It, 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 it had gone away. So, yeah. Anyway, but, but – where uh, is it? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the bad news. So I'm not pleased at the minute, but I haven't given up. You know, I'll have another replacement and then try running again. Who knows? Wow. He, you did something. A lot of times they tell you when your knee is replaced, you cannot run on it. I and did. you did something uh, interesting. I know we talked about this during the broadcast last year. You were running basically the first day you said, I'm going to start running again. Would you run 50 seconds? One? No, le- less. Yeah, 10, 10 paces. And then built that up to yeah, yeah, you, 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 what, how long of races were you running? Up to half marathon. Wow. So he went from running 10 steps to, to a half marathon, uh, rehabilitating a replaced knee. Just, I, it's it, incredible. I always tell people you, the body needs time. Yeah, you yeah. can't rush anything. It just it's, you've got to rebuild all of those mm-hmm. cells, yeah. and you can't do it in a week. You know, there's there's a, a great runner called Dick Beardsley. He was here one year for for your race. I think he won it one year. Mm-hmm. Um, and he tried to rehabilitate too fast, and he's kept having to have replacements. Well, you can't rush it. You know, right, just, right. It's going to take two or three years to to completely come back. I'm a baseball fan. I keep seeing that uh, talked about all the time with uh, with arm surgeries uh, or any of the surgeries that are done. They they rush to get back, and it's almost always the case they end up re-injuring. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you yeah. got it. You got it. But uh, you're speaking of time. I mean, your age and your age, this is, you are a model for the rest of us to say, don't give up just because you're getting older and maybe some aches and pains. You can keep it going. I think that's true, Bill. Uh, I was with a surgeon recently having an injection in this knee, and the nurse beforehand <laughs> said, oh, we've got to fill the form in because uh, they, they, they forgot to do it last time. And I said, oh, I thought they did it. And she started to go through and check everything off. And I said, no, 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 no. And she said, Aren't you on any medications? <laughs> and yeah. I said, she said, oh, that's why they didn't fill it in because. <laughs> yeah. And that's a lifetime of running. Right. Helps right. you on that. And yeah. there's, no, there's no guarantees. You know, you can, you can get heart problems, you can get cancer and everything else. Sure. But, but insofar as there, there is something which is protection against yeah. general illness and decline, <laughs> exercise is it. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily running, but walking, doing, doing things. Get, yeah. get out there and do things. Well, and you talk about uh, the stats. Um, if you can improve your numbers, um, if you can incru- improve, if you're healthy, you now improve the chances that, um, that you're going to be healthy. Yeah, I think that's, um, that, I think that's can't true. Can't guarantee anything. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so the race but, coming up, uh, uh, you, uh, of course, will handle this on IBX, and you have for, for a long time. Um, what are you looking for this year's Boilermaker? There's some interesting things. I was talking to Dick Mateer last night, who, who does a great job as elite recruiter, mm-hmm. uh, and he's just taken on as a volunteer assistant um, a guy called Dennis Johnson, who's been one of your top high school coaches. He was a teacher, I think, math, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, a top high school coach, and he produced endless streams of, of good high school runners. So he knows the sport very well. And his job is, is to recruit Americans. Because you've had okay. tremendous African fields, yeah. you've had decent but not great American fields mm-hmm. o- over the last 10, year, 10 20 years or yeah. so, and it would really help the race and it would help the sport if this race could bring in more, especially rising. Area. I asked him, did, was his policy just the, the rising people or the established ones like the masters? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're also trying to trying to bring in good, good American masters as well, and, and they do. That, that's the over 40s. And over 40s it, and over right. 50s and over yep, 60s, yep. especially. And there's a guy called Kevin Castile who's coming back in again, who won here two years ago, was second last year. He's really good, um, American master. And so the American field, they were saying the women especially is the best they've had that they can remember. Yeah. And they've got some good young people in the men's field. They're not going to be top three. Right, right. You know, not in this field. You know, these, the, the, the Africans are just so good. You know, they've yeah. got so many natural advantages. Uh, it's going to take a long time before anybody comes up and beats them. Somebody will. Yeah, you know, right, G- right. Galen Rupp got an Olympic silver medal against them, um, right. bronze medal, bronze mm-hmm. medal, and then was second in Boston this this year. So it's it's happening. Yeah, um, we don't give up. But um, the race is doing the right thing, which is which is encouraging, giving them the incentive, giving them expenses, making them feel good. I'll interview them on WIPX, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and they can talk about their sponsors. And, and so that's how yeah. it all works. You gradually build the base of the sport that and, way. And the beauty of this, I just have to say, um, having you on the broadcast is, and uh, it might have been Earl that was talking about it uh, last night to me, Earl Reed, 
um, is that you know these runners, you know the names. Um, the rest of us uh, are butcher artists when it comes to <laughs> pronouncing the names, and you actually get the names right. I think it's um, it's pretty important, and we appreciate that. Um, I've got uh, as a stadium announcer, you know, <clears throat> yes. I, I always work very hard at that because. For these, for, for these young people, mm-hmm. this could be the most important moment of their life. Right, right. You know, when they win a gold medal at a Commonwealth Games or Olympic. Well, so they deserve to have their name right. Yeah. You know, that's, and right. I used to go and talk to them beforehand and had some hilarious conversations. Yeah. I remember the Nigerian team literally lying on their backs and kicking their legs in the air because I was screwing up their names. So <laughs> 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 and, and I kept practicing them and practicing yeah. them. <laughs> and during the awards, I'm a, I, I end up being on the stage and, and and escorting them out as they're as they're being announced, and it is tough to. Um, uh, but it, uh, these guys, in many cases, they don't even speak English, and no. it's it's difficult for them to get out there and uh, and know when and where they're supposed to go. But um, but they're they are elites. There's no doubt about it. These yeah. are special people. And one uh, that's always been my as it were mission is I want them to be people. I yeah, don't want them to be no. ju- don't want them to be just another fast African. You right. Know, because they are they're real people. They yeah. got real lives yeah. and, re- and real problems. But when you say I know them, th- then sometimes you do. Yeah. One yeah. advantage this year is that. One impressive thing about this year's field is that a lot of last year's top places are back. And that's really good. I've complained yeah. for years that I'm trying every year to personalize and make interesting people who are in right, here for the right. first time. Whereas this time, six of last year's top ten men are back, wow. including the first four from last wow. year, the first four places. So we, you know, and the crowds can begin to get it becomes to a, uh, I've talked to Tim about this. It becomes a, a, it's a rivalry you're watching. You want to see, is this one going to, you know, last year he was second. And, and can, he, can he get to that number one spot this year? It and becomes, we, can, we can get interested in the story. There yeah. was a guy a few yeah. years ago who was, who was well, he wanted to get married. And so, so that was kind of part of the story. And, mm-hmm. and is he going to find somebody in Utica? And is he coming back next year? And so yeah. on. And, the, and for a year or two, it was a good story. Yeah, yeah. And there was another, there was a Moroccan marathon runner. And he kept saying he was going to marry his fiance when he won a major marathon and he, and he kept finishing second and third <laughs> and we all the press would say afterwards well are you going to marry her this time and he, would, <laughs> he would crack up laughing <laughs> yeah that, that's, that's but awesome. then on the other hand uh, dick told me last night that he'd just heard of a new ethiopian woman added to the field mm-hmm. i've never heard of her but apparently she's a likely winner you know she's been training yeah. in america she's obviously good she's called ruth aga sora so if she wins, you heard it here. Okay, listen for that name. <laughs> but I can't really claim. What much are the odds on that? I'll be, <laughs> I'll be finding. I'll be finding out more about her All in right. the next, next twenty four hours. Well, and again, you can listen on Sunday mo- on Sunday morning. Uh, uh, it's a great broadcast. You can bet on almost anything <clears throat> in Vegas. Anything. Yes. Can yes. you bet on winners of Boilermaker, New York City Marathon, Boston, stuff like that? Oh, I bet you could. You could go to an English betting shop. I wouldn't know about Vegas. Yeah, but, but I, I've I won money on the on the Olympic marathon one year. I was staying with a friend who was a British Olympian, and we all put we all went down to the local betting shop and said we wanted to bet on the Olympic marathon. No okay. kidding. <laughs> Bingo. We, we did. Well, uh, by the way, on the on the broadcast, you know, I'm here yeah. on my own today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my wife Catherine Switzer is coming in. She's giving a speech in Boston at the moment. Yeah, but she will be here for the broadcast, awesome. and so she'll be out there. On the motorcycle or the tricycle or whatever mm-hmm. it is, whatever, yeah. whatever you've got for her, doing that live commentary that she always does so well on the women's race. So yeah, that, it's you'll, have, you'll yeah. have that part of it. She'll, she'll be here. Very nice. And she uh, had a big year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, she'll be on a Can Am Spider uh, from uh, DDS Motorsports. We want to thank him for that. But obviously, as you said, she had a big year because this was an anniversary year. This is an incredible year for her. And, and, and in fact, this the thing in, in, in Boston at the moment is, is that she's. She's speaking at Bose, the corporation, because they're one of the sponsors of the foundation that she's established, the 261 Fearless Foundation. Her number when she ran the Boston Marathon in mm-hmm. 1967 that the race director tried to rip off when he attacked her physically was 261, and that's become sort of the, the symbol. And, and so she's got this foundation which is taking running to women all around the world, and it's spreading. Uh, you know, and they, yeah, also, yeah. And they ultimately wanted to get it to places where – where women have a tough time, which is yeah, why they're yeah. calling it fearless. So, yes, yeah, so following that Boston Marathon. Uh, and what year she, was she, that, by the that way, when that 67. happened? So this year was her 50th anniversary. 
And Isn't that amazing. Wow. In 67, they didn't allow women to, to run the, the race. She was the first female she, runner of it. Wow. She was the first officially. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky story because a woman, Roberta Gibb, had actually great crashed the race the, the, the year before. They wouldn't yeah. let her run, but she jumped in from mm-hmm. some bushes. So and Catherine's always acknowledged that Roberta did that. Uh, and then Catherine ran in 67 wearing a number. Uh, which the race director tried to rip off, and then she's kept running and stayed involved in the sport. And you know, doing, when did they uh, when did they begin allowing women? Was it after sixty two? Ninety. Okay, so, yes, I just five, five think years. about this so for a years. second. So, so she and she and some other women lobbied, and yeah. you know they were activists. And, and could you imagine nineteen seventy two? Um, that's not that long no, it's ago. Not. That's a ca- well, that's what Think she says. It. All yeah. this has happened in her lifetime. Yeah. And now there are more women running yeah. than, than men. Probably on Sunday there will be more women out there in that total 20,000. And luckily she was faster than that race director. <laughs> yeah, right. He wasn't well, catching her. Well, it wasn't that. It was that she had in, in those. This is long before my time. I mean, her boyfriend was was a hammer thrower and and, and all American football player. Okay. So he he did what she calls a cross body block. You probably uh, know what that so, is. I would call, yeah. I, <laughs> I would call it a you, shol- I would call it a shoulder charge. You can and, imagine what it is. He bowled the yeah. he bowled the race the race down. <laughs> wow, <that's awesome. laughs> There's a photo of this. <laughs> It's one of the greatest uh, pictures of I all time. People ask you, know, I'm married to Catherine, and I always yeah. say very seriously, well, before we got married, we made prenuptial agreements, and one of them was, if you ever get attacked by a bad-tempered Scotsman, I'll try and talk him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. Um, wow. All right, uh, listen, uh, Roger Robinson, great stories, and you'll be handling the broadcast coming up, and we appreciate it. And congratulations uh, on that Liz Divin thank award. You. I hope your listeners really appreciate it. Uh, he was a great man, and he yes. and his wife have done so much for the Boilermaker. Yeah. It's really so, big. 